the next section here is how to find the sum, how to find the difference, how to find the product, and how to find the quotient of these decimal numbers. Okay, to find the sum and to find the difference between these numbers, we have to line up the decimal. So between these two, make sure that you line up the decimal. And in order for us to do that, I'm going to choose graph paper so we can line up the decimal correctly. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to do this real quick. I'm going to see if I can minimize that so I can see my work. Those are my numbers right there. And I'm going to line them up using the grid paper. So here we go. The first number is 0 0.254. The next number is 1.32. And the last number is an 8. 8 is a whole number, right? So any number that has that's a whole number has a decimal behind it. So the decimal is in right here for 8. Now that we've lined up the decimals, we need to make sure you fill in any missing zeros. So now that we fill in any missing zeros, we can go ahead and add. And because the word is sum, we're going to need to add. Okay, let me get a brighter color here. I'm going to get this uh, yellow one. So 4 plus nothing is 4. 5 plus 2 is 7. 2 plus 3 is 5. Bring down the decimal. And 1 plus 8 is 9. So my answer is 9.574. Or 9 and 574 thousandths. So that's what I'm going to write in my answer. 9 and 574 thousandths. Now number 8. We've got to find the difference between 1.235 and 0 0.047. And notice that I'm not reading those correctly, but that's okay, because we're going to do this correctly this next time. Okay, so now we're going to line them up. Oh, there it is. Move up my window just a tad bit. I can see my colors. Okay, so we have 1 and 235 thousandths. And we need to subtract, we need to find the difference. I'm going to line up those decimals so we can do that. So my decimals lined up right there. And I need to line it up. So now we have 47 thousands because that's 7 in the thousands place. So now when I go ahead and subtract, I'm going to end up with 5 minus 7. Uh-oh, I can't do that. I have to borrow to regroup. This 3 is going to become a 2 now. And this 5 becomes a 15. So 15 minus 7 gives me an 8. 2 minus 4, can't do that either. I we'll have to regroup again. So that 2 becomes a 1, and this 2 becomes a 12. 12 minus 4 gives me 8, and 1 minus nothing is 1. Bring down my decimal, and 1 minus nothing is 1. So my answer is 1 and 188 thousandths. And that's what I'm going to put for my answer. So 1 and uh, 188. Okay. Okay, now it says find the product and the quotient. To find the product, remember that we we uh, multiply them as if they were whole numbers. Then we count when we finish, we count the decimal places. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So it doesn't matter if you line up the decimal when you multiply because we're not looking for the decimal coming straight down. We're looking for how many decimal places we have in our factors and that's how many decimal places we should have in our answer. Okay, so here we go. Here's find the product and I'm going to start at the very top so I have some room. So it's 6 and 52 hundredths times 7.1. Remember, I'm not lining up my decimals. I could care less if my decimals were lined up. I'm just going to multiply as if this was whole numbers. So 1 times 2 is just 2. 1 times 5 is 5. 1 times 6 is 6. 7 times 2, now is a 7, so 
you can put a placeholder here if you want to or just leave it blank 7 times 2 is 14 carry the 1 7 times 5 is uh, 35 plus 1 is 36 carry the 3 7 times 6 is 42 plus 3 is 45 now we're gonna add them up so we can finish our, our multiplication we end up with 2 and 9 this is 12 carry the 1 so that's 6 and that's 4 now we this is where we come in with the decimal placement how many decimal places do we have behind our decimal in the first factor we have 2 how many decimal places in the second factor we have 1 so the total number of decimal places needs to have in our answer so 1 plus 2 is 3 so we need to have 3 numbers behind the decimal that means that my decimal needs to end up right here so my answer is 46 and 292 thousands Let's see if I can remember that 46 and 242 thousands get that right 292 thousands okay 46 and 292 thousands now to find the quotient when you find the quotient you have to move the decimal in the divisor okay and if you do it in the divisor which is the number on the outside of your uh, division bracket you have to also do it on the inside the one the dividend okay so make sure let's let's do that right now okay let me get my graph paper again here we go the first number is always going to be dividend the one that goes inside so I'm going to write down that number inside my division bracket so I have 82.6 and on the outside I have my divisor 0 0.21 so now I'm going to move my decimal twice on my divisor to make it go all the way back here so I can be so I can have a whole number out here and if I do that on the outside I have to do the same thing on the inside in the same direction so here I'm going to have to fill in a zero and there's my decimal I'm going to move my decimal straight up so now I have all these numbers and I have a whole bunch of arrows so what I want to do is I want to delete uh, the numbers that I don't need. I don't need that zero I don't need the decimal there because it's gone already this decimal moved places now it was right here and we move straight up into our quotient to the answer so we really don't need that decimal and we really don't need that decimal either so now we're done we are cleaned up a little bit so we can go ahead and divide without having to have mistakes too many mistakes anyways so 21 can 21 go into 8 hopefully you said no 21 can go into 82 though how many times I know that 20 goes into 84 times so I'll try 4 4 times 1 is 4 4 times 2 is 8 uh oh that's too many 84 is bigger than 82 so it's not gonna be 84 it's not gonna be 4 up there it's gonna have to be 1 less it's gonna have to be 3 3 times 1 is 3 3 times 2 is 6 when I subtract I'm gonna have to regroup so when I regroup this 8 becomes a 7 and this 2 becomes a 12 12 minus 3 is 8 and 7 minus 6 is 1 when you bring down the 6 I have 186 now I don't know how many times 21 goes into 186 perfectly but I, I can go ahead and look at the first number here that 2 and I know that 2 goes into this first two numbers 18 nine times so I can start there and see if that's gonna give me the right answer so let's let's try that now I'm gonna try the 9 9 times 1 is 9 and 9 times 2 is 18 It's just above it so it's not gonna be a 9 it's gonna have to be an 8 okay so 8 times 1 is 8 and 8 times 2 is 16 when I subtract these numbers I'm gonna have to regroup again this 8 becomes a 7 and this 6 becomes a 16 16 minus 8 is 8 7 minus 6 is 1 and 1 minus 1 is 0 the last thing I have to bring down is a 0 because that's the last number I have I might have to add another 0 though we don't know yet um, 21 21 cannot go into 180 evenly and I know this was 186 and when I multiply by 9 it was 189 
So I'm going to use 8 again. So 21 times 8 is right here already, 168. And when I subtract correctly, I may have to bring up my graph paper here. I have to regroup. This 8 becomes a 7, and this 0 becomes a 10. 10 minus 8 is 2. 7 minus 6 is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. Okay, if I bring down another 0, so I can keep going, because I still haven't found a repeating pattern, and I don't have a remainder of 0, so I have to keep going. 21 cannot go into 120 evenly. But 21 does go into 120, well, we'll see. We'll use the same trick I showed you before, where 2 goes into 12 six times, right? So we're going to try 6 and see what happens. But if you're smart, like I think you are, then you already figure out that 6 is going to be too much because 6 times 1 is 6, 6 times 2 is 12. So we'll end up with 126. That's too much. So we're going to have to put a 5 right here. 5 times 1 is 5, 5 times 2 is 10. So we end up with uh, subtracting 120 minus 105. In order for us to do that, we have to regroup. That 2 becomes a 1, and then this 0 becomes a 10. 10 minus 5 is 5, and 1 minus 0 is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. Okay, and it looks like we're going to have to add another decimal and bring it down. I mean, another 0 and bring it down. We have 150. Well, two, 21 times 5 is 105. 21 times 8 was 168. Uh, let's try 21 times 7 now. 7 times 1 is 7. 7 times 2 is 14. All right, it's pretty close to it. So this is 150, this is 147. If you regroup correctly, 10 minus 7 is 3. 4 minus 4 is 0. 1 minus 1, is one, minus one is 0. Okay, and then you have another 0 you have to bring down because you still haven't gotten a uh, repeating decimal or a uh, uh, 0 for a remainder. So now we have 30. Can 21 go into 30? Yep, one time. So 1 times 21 is 21. When you subtract, you get, we don't care what we get because what we're looking for here, when I give you a problem in my class, I want you to uh, round to the hundredth place. And I told you this before. These two numbers are the one last ones I want to see in your answer. But we needed to have uh, done this one right here, that one. Oh, you can't see that blue highlighter. Let me choose an orange or a green. You need to uh, see this one right here. You can barely see the one now, so let me rewrite that one on top of that green. So we need to know that what this number was so that we can know what happens to this 7. Is it going to stay a 7 or is it going to round up to an 8? And in this case it's going to stay a 7 because this 1 is below uh, 5. If it's 5 or higher we round up. If it's 4, 3, 2, 1 or 0 we make the 7 stay the same. So my final answer here, we're going to round this, is going to be 388 and 57 hundredths. Okay, so I'm going to write that down on the other page. 388 and 57 hundredths. Okay, that's my answer.